former LAPD detective Mark Furman now analyzes crimes as a correspondent for the Fox News Channel. He wrote a book last year called The Murder Business. Why did you become part of the media when you have obviously such strong opinions against the media? Well, Fox News wasn't around then. Mm -hmm. So I, and I, I think Fox News is different. Uh, I, I'm not a, a carnival sideshow act. Mm -hmm. um, this is about you're a detective and we need somebody that actually can find out stuff, put us on the right track, do no harm, mm -hmm. and if we can, push it forward. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's been a breakdown in investigative journalism, period? I don't think there is any investigative. There's, there's a few people that can do investigative journalism, but uh, an investigative reporter is because they say they are. They don't have any experience in how to investigate. Mm -hmm. And the Simpson case is a, is a perfect example. I mean, I, I was waiting, and so was my partner, Brad Roberts, for just a question, just one question. And they would have had their career made, but to this day, they still, they still don't get it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they never put your partner, Brad Roberts, on the witness stand? They couldn't put Brad Roberts on because Bill Van Adder effectively testified that he found many things that Brad did can't have Brad finding the same thing, uh, it gets a little worse. Brad Roberts actually is watching this. I'm not watching anything. I was ordered not to. Mm -hmm. So he's watching this and he's getting madder and madder. And Brad Roberts is the one that led Marsha Clark around the Rockingham estate in the afternoon of June 13th and showed her everything that he and I had found. Marsha Clark saw right then the clothes in the washing machine. She saw the blood in the maid's half bath. Well, Van Adder never took any of the evidence. They just didn't take it. So now when Brad is, is the only person on the LAPD that was, the, I mean, even people directing traffic were interviewed. Nobody interviewed Brad Roberts. Nobody from robbery homicide, nobody from the prosecutor's office. He was never talked to after that first day. I'm trying to understand why, though. Well, because, why. because Phil Van Adder effectively eliminated him some way. Now, it gets complicated. Because he'd already said that I found these things, so well, we can't bring in the guy that actually did find them. Even, That's what you're saying. Right. Okay. Even though uh, Mark is no longer a police detective, he still uses his skills to investigate high-profile cases. Let's talk about the Martha Moxley case. October 30th, 1975, it was one of the most infamous unsolved murders. 15-year-old Martha Moxley was bludgeoned to death in her upscale Greenwich, Connecticut neighborhood. For over two decades, there were no arrests. The case was later reopened with the help of author Dominic Don and former LAPD detective Mark Furman. All of the evidence pointed to Michael Skakel, a nephew of Ethel Kennedy and former neighbor of the Moxleys. In 2002, Michael was arrested and found guilty of the murder. He was sentenced to prison for 20 years to life. You tell my producers that, that your participation in the Moxley case was sort of your debt paid to society. What did you mean by that? Well, you have one trial, if somebody wants to blame me for it, and straight up, mm -hmm. um, I think the Dorothy Moxley seeing justice for the death of an innocent 15-year-old, I think, I think I did pay a debt. Yeah. What new evidence did you find? Well, you know, the, everything was there, uh, it, which is always fascinating. But if you can't put the puzzle together or you're not courageous enough to go up against some of the richest families in the country, mm -hmm. then it's not going to be solved. And I, I came up with a lot of interviews and a lot of evidence that uh, really didn't exist by, I mean, some of it by using the phone book. We'll be right back. Next. What would you say to the Goldman and the Brown families? 